Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are out there in the world. We're going to continue on from where we left off last time. Like and subscribe for more biblical truthful content and musical covers of video games and TV shows and movies and I don't know, who knows, all kinds of cool things. If I can uh, think it up, want to do it, figure out the voice work, add my voice work onto it, play it on my keyboard, or I'll get the original track and uh, sing along with it. Um, for fun, and then do a little acapella thing at the end, and a little bit during the song. I find that really cool. I like to do that. But yes, like and subscribe for more of that. My name is John Mark W. I'm hitting you with the word again. We're hitting you with the truth. Uh, this is something that I've been prompted to do by the Lord since COVID-19 started, especially since it started, because a lot of people need to hear the word. They need to have a right relationship with God. And not all of them are going to be able to go to church. Not all of them are going to be able to Some won't even think about darkening the door of a church. And some churches in some states and some different parts of the world are just very, very, very restrictive in how they go back and, and what time they can go. Some, some churches are on a 25-people-only rotation. That is crazy. I'm glad it's not like that where I am. Where I am, everybody can come back to church again, you know. Uh, there's some people, though, who, you know, are elderly, who, you know, they uh, received a little special uh, YouTube code and, and they watch the services <clears throat> via YouTube of the church that I do attend, but most mostly everybody's coming back, and that's the good thing, and I'm glad it's not on no 25 rotation, that would be crazy, right? I just got off of my day job, I'm working just a little bit, you know, it's the night shift, so my day job is kind of like my night job now, and then um, I am uh, got church tonight service, so I'm trying to, after I make this video, I am going to conk out, I'm going to get some rest so I can be nice and rested for service after this, and then later on in the evening, which will be morning for me. It's kind of weird when you're doing night shift, but hey, you know, we're we making it work. Uh, I, I thank God I can get some hours in. I thank God that um, it was one of the available slots, and I was asked to do it, and I was like, hey, okay, it's my first night shift ever, and I've been doing it for a few weeks now, uh, and uh, not, not every day, not even f five days a week. It's very limited hours because you know uh hotel is where i am working at at the time being but uh just a little bit about me i'm a normal dude i'm not a pastor i'm not a theologian i am not a uh a prophet i am not gonna lie to you find people who are listening to this and say that i am that because i am not that would not be right. Some people like to call themselves prophets and prophetesses to sound important. Or uh, they want to, uh, I don't know, want to make themselves seem great in the eyes of the people. I am not one that's like that. I'm going to tell you right away, I'm a normal dude. I'm a normal dude who the Lord has saved. He sanctified and saved me and washed me free of my sin. And I am walking with him every single day. To ensure that I stay saved, that I stay clean and under the blood of Jesus Christ, and that I stay in right relationship with him and those people around me, okay? That's simply what the Christian life is, man. Some people put too much on it. They make it this weird thing, and then nobody wants to do it because it looks weird, because they're weird, and that, that's just not how it needs to be, all right? Uh, I'm sharing the truth of the word because people need to hear it. And unlike those lore and entertainment and video games, anime, movies, whatever you want to call it, the Bible is actually real. And those movies, entertainment, whatever you want to call them, take little bits and pieces from the Bible and tweak it a little bit in, in order to fulfill whatever narrative or agenda the creator of that thing has. So I used to love the movies when I was young, and I used to love entertainment like that, but as I get older and a little bit more wiser, I tend to veer off from those things, because I know at the end of the day, they're just fiction, you know what I'm saying? The Bible is actually real, it really happened, the proof is all over the world, people have recorded and documented things, and the Bible is that, and it's all pointing towards Jesus Christ. Why is Jesus so important? Because the Old Testament speaks of him, type and shadow of things to come. He is in the Old Testament. He is literally coming in so many different types of things. He's the pre-incarnate Christ, okay? We already seen him 
You can look at my other videos when he came down and talked to Abraham face to face to make the covenant. We already seen him when he wrestled Jacob. Okay? That that was him. You know what I'm saying? We've seen him when he was walking in the garden and he was calling Adam. Okay? In in the word, you know, that was him. You know, he shows up so many other times in the Old Testament in many different forms. And now we're in Exodus where it's all about Moses trying to get the people free from Egypt. And uh, we're going to see all that coolness and all that is. So the order of my videos, how they usually go is I do an introduction like I'm doing right now. I do a um, reading and analysis of the word. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and pray for those who need it at the end. And um, I got this PayPal thing set up where I am accepting donations. If you guys want to donate to me, I, I'm, I would love that. That would be so awesome. But you do not have to. You are not pressured to. You are not forced to. This is not a tithe. This is not a pledge. I'm not asking for anything like that. You need, if you tithe and pledge, continue to do that to your normal church. But it would really help me to produce and make better videos for you guys. And, uh, you know... Uh, very more polished content, if you will. Um, uh, so we're always accepting donations there. So much appreciated. I'll leave the link in the description. So without further ado, enough talk. Let's get on into the word. A plague against livestock. Go back to Pharaoh, the Lord commanded Moses. Tell him what is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go. So they can worship me. By the way, we're in Exodus number 9. New Living Translation is what I've got. But a King James Version will work. Uh, English Standard Version. A uh, Amplified Version. Whatever other version of the Bible you have, you can still follow along. It's always good to follow along with me, making sure I'm not spewing nonsense. They call it spews for views. I don't do that. I'm talking about the truth here. If you haven't noticed, that's probably why my videos do not have a lot of views and they do not have a lot of likes. But I knew this was going to happen because the word of God is true anyhow and the truth isn't always popular. You know what I'm saying? But just to let you guys know, it's good to follow along. If you do not have a Bible and you really want one, you can download the free Bible app on your Android or Apple device. It is free and it's so many different translations. Heck, it's actually what I'm reading from right now. So anyways, let's just go ahead and get back into it. If you continue to hold them and refuse to let them go, that was chat, uh, verse 2, now we're in verse 3, the hand of the Lord will strike all of your livestock, your horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, sheep, and goats with a deadly plague. But the Lord will again make a distinction between the livestock of the Israelites and the Egyptians. Not a single one of the Israelites' animals will die. The Lord has already set the time for the plague to begin, he has declared that he will strike the land tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he said. The next morning, all the livestock of, Egypt, uh, of the Egyptians died, but the Israelites don't lose a single, didn't lose a single animal. Pharaoh sent his officials to investigate, and they discovered that the Israelites had not lost a single animal. Even so, Pharaoh's heart remained stubborn, and he still refused to let the people go. A plague of festering boils. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handcuffs of soot from a brick kiln and have Moses toss it into the air while Pharaoh watches. The ashes will spread like fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, causing festering boils to break out on people and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from the brick kiln and went and stood before Pharaoh as Pharaoh watched Moses threw the soot into the air and boils broke out on, on people and animals alike. Even the magicians were unable to stand before Moses because the boils had broken out on them and all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and just as the Lord had predicted to Moses, Pharaoh refused to listen. So the absolute power is refusing to yield to the real absolute power, which is the Heavenly Father, the, the King of the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts, God most high, the Ancient of Days, Yahweh, <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, the banner, Jehovah El Cabal, the God of war. It, it's, it's God the most high. He, he 
is, basically. That's why he is. He said, I am, and that's all you need to know, you know? It's like, I'm telling you, he can be your best friend. He can fill in the gaps, be your brother. He can be your worst enemy if you want him to be, too. And I'm telling you, God is trying to do this thing, but... He already told Moses that Pharaoh's heart was going to be stubborn, and we can see that here. Let's get on back to it. A plague of hail. So we're on verse 13 now. Then the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Tell him this is what the Lord God of the Hebrews has said. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you don't, I will send more plagues on you and your officials and your people. Then you will know that there is no one like me in all the earth. By now I could have lifted my hand and struck you and your people with a plague to wipe you off of the face of the earth. But I have spared you for a purpose, to show you my power and to spread my fame throughout the earth. So God has a specific goal in mind. Now, how many knows if a human wanted to do this, well, a human couldn't do it. But humans have other way of spreading their fame. Throughout the earth. You have to sign contracts with the devil to get famous. Yeah, that, that's what usually happens. You'll get all the publicity, all the notoriety and everything, but you got to sell your soul to the devil first. You know, I really applaud those people who do not have to sell their soul and they get famous. You're talking people like Billy Graham. You're talking people like Martin Luther King Jr. You're, you're talking like uh, the folks of the, of the Black Panthers. Well, I don't know. I don't know if all of them didn't sell their souls or not, but who knows? Um, you're talking about, um, you know, people who got famous for like really good reasons. In other words, that's what I'm saying. They didn't get famous because they, I don't know, did some weird stuff somewhere and then, okay, because you did this weird, weird stuff, ritualistic, occultic bull crap. Now we can make you be uh, win an Academy Award or all kind of some bull crap. You know, that's Hollywood's games that they play. Uh, I could talk all day about that. The most wickedest man that ever lived, Aleister Crawley, went on ahead and got Witch Coven started in Hollywood. He was the one who started that whole thing. His main mission was to find the most, a power that superseded the Holy Spirit. That is crazy when you got a dude who's trying to find a power that supersedes the Holy Spirit. That is greater than the Holy Spirit. This would mean that this dude knows what the Holy Spirit is, first off. And secondly, it would mean that he's trying to find out something greater, which there is none. Magic is just a cheap imitation of what God can do. And we're seeing that here with the Egyptian magicians and what they try to do. It's a cheap, it's cheap trick compared to what God is doing. He's doing real things. He is... Okay, I'm going to put it in gamer terms. Especially with the PC gamers, if there's any out there. You guys play the game? Or maybe even a normal console game where you can actually mess with the parameters and change stuff in the game. You can like make infinity monsters come out and, or you can make yourself get super strong or you can make yourself, uh, I don't know, have a bunch of people on your side helping you fight and they never die and they never get tired and stuff like that. Well, come on. God's a creator. He can do that, but not in a game. He does that in real life and he can change the parameters to anything he wants for what purpose he wants. But God is righteous. He's not a man that he should lie. He's all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's, I mean, he can do anything he wants. He's got no reason to, you know, just fool around and play with people for, for fun. That God doesn't take any pleasure in that. He's God. The devil likes to do that, if anything, and then mess with your mind and have your thinking that God is doing it. But God right now, is letting him them know. He's got no reason to hide anything. He's telling them straight up what he's doing. So Pharaoh's heart was destined to be hard for this moment right here. I wonder what this particular Pharaoh had to go to to get such a hard heart and be so stern. He was probably trained in however they trained Pharaohs in those days or he did certain things that just made him who he was and he wasn't about to yield. I mean, the Pharaohs in the past, we've seen in Joseph's time, they at least acknowledged the Most High God. Yeah, they might not have served him, but they at least acknowledged who he was and saw his presence on Joseph. 
This Pharaoh right here, he, you remember he already said in a few chapters back, he doesn't know the Lord, so why should he listen to him? And God understands that. So he's really making sure, oh, you will know me. You know what I'm saying? Because number one, you're messing with the apple of my eye, my people. And I want them to come to me now. They've suffered and worked under you guys for many years. Many years. There, it's time for them to leave. But, you know, like a slave master who makes a good living off of his slaves, he ain't trying to let them go. Why would he do that? Then, then the Egyptians are gonna, actually going to have to work now. <laughs> and then he's actually going to have to start paying people. And then, you know, <laughs> Pharaoh will be a bit poorer now because he's got to pay his own citizens to do the work that he was getting for free for the slaves, right? So that's what we're freaking looking at here. And now let's continue. Uh, verse 17. But you still lord, but you still lord it over my people and refuse to let them go. So tomorrow at this time, I will send a hailstorm more devastating than any in all the history of Egypt. Quick, order the livestock and servants to come in from the fields to find shelter. Any person or animal left outside will die when the hail fails. Some of Pharaoh's officials were afraid because of what the Lord had said. They quickly brought their servants and livestock in from the fields, but those who paid no attention to the word of the Lord left theirs out in the open. Then the Lord said to Moses, Lift your hand toward the sky so hail may fall on the people, the livestock, and all the plants throughout Egypt. And if the Egyptians were uh, vegans, right, they really, really didn't like the fact that their plants were, were getting jacked up from the hail. I mean, hail in Egypt? Oh my goodness, that has to be a miracle of God because it's, you know how Egypt is. It's, it's you know, you have a nice Nile and some greenery, but it's surrounded by the desert and the Sahara is near that junk. So it's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's whew, really crazy to have hail out there. You know what I'm saying? That, that's definitely a culture shock. They've probably never seen hail before in their life. Um, we're at uh, verse 23. So Moses lifted his staff toward the sky and the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashed toward the earth. The Lord sent a tremendous hailstorm against all the land of Egypt. Never in all the history of Egypt had there been a storm like that with such devastating hail and continuous lightning. It, like, that's what I was just saying, right? Uh, verse 25. It left all of Egypt in ruins. The hail struck down everything in the open field, people, animals, and plants alike. Even the trees were destroyed. The only place without hail was the region of Goshen, where the people of Israel lived. Then Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he confessed. The Lord is the righteous one, and my people and I are wrong. Please beg the Lord to end this terrifying thunder and hail. We've had enough. I will let you go. You don't need to stay any longer. All right, Moses replied. As soon as I leave the city, I will lift my hands and pray to the Lord. Then the thunder and hail will stop, and you will know that the earth belongs to the Lord. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord God. So Moses was getting, you know, he, he was feeling it in his spirit. Plus, he's, he knows what the Lord is going to tell him and what he's told him already. So he knows he's probably going to get stubborn again. This is a nice little pattern that Pharaoh's doing. He's just saying this stuff to stop the stuff. You know what I mean? But he's going to still not let them go. And, and Moses is pretty sure of it at this point. And then uh, all the flax, oh yeah, verse 31, all the flax and barley were ruined by the hail because the barley had formed heads and the flax was budding. But the wheat and the emmer, the wheat and the emmer wheat were spared because they had not yet sprouted from the ground. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and went out of the city. When he lifted his hands to the Lord, the thunder and hail stopped and the downpour ceased. When, but when Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he and his officials sinned again. And Pharaoh again became stubborn because his heart was hard pharaoh refused to let the people leave just 
as the Lord had predicted to Moses. So that's what, you know, this is what's going down. That is the end of Exodus number nine, New Living Translation, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. Now we're going to move over to the prayer phase, so don't go away just yet. I'm going to get everybody in a position to receive something from God in just a moment. By His grace, we can do this. So you say, you know what, I don't know the Lord. You might be like Pharaoh, how he was, you know, he, Pharaoh admitted it. I don't know the Lord, you know, who is God that I should even listen to him? But you're starting to understand when watching these videos, when doing these readings with me, you're starting to kind of grasp something. Maybe a seed is planted in your heart and you would say, I, I got to do something about what I'm learning. I got to do something about what, you know, Brother John Mark Dub is saying here. I, I got to I got to try to uh, I got to do whatever what I need to do to get closer to the Lord. And you say, what's the next step? It is simply to pray, be genuine about this prayer and ask him to come inside of your heart. If you're willing to do that, repeat after me right now. Bow your head and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord. You'd say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. And I'm asking that you come inside of my heart, make me clean, take away all of my sin, my sinful habits, lifestyle, choices. Take away that sin, make me clean and whole, and I will follow you, Lord, for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray, by your precious blood, amen. You guys are, the Bible clearly says, when you Get your heart right with Jesus Christ. Your book is written in the Lamb's book of life and all of heaven rejoices at that. All of heaven rejoices at that. So whoever you are, oh man, it's so awesome. I'm, I'm happy for you. The journey is beginning right now. You guys pause the video, uh, celebrate, uh, uh, you know, uh, pray as long as you need to. We're going to move over to the backsliders. Backsliders, y'all know what time it is. You guys know what's up. Maybe some of you guys, it's your second, third, and fourth time in this situation. But for those who have been with the Lord and walked away, you got to get back because he could come at any moment in time. The world is crazy right now. The Lord could come back at any moment in time. Missing the rapture is something you don't want to do. And if you're a backslider, you know what that is. You don't want to miss it. Nobody want to miss it. You know there will be some Christians who will miss it because of the stuff that they're involved in. It's <laughs> sad, sad to say. But backsliders, you guys got to get your hearts right. So this is the time for you to do that right now. Forgive those who you need to forgive. Go back to that church house if you can. You know, some restrictions are different in different places. We understand that. But in the meantime, hey, listen to my videos or read the Bible yourself or listen to somebody else's videos who you trust, somebody you know speaking the truth and not just speaking flowery stuff to make it sound good because they want your money. Or they're not just, uh, you know, leaving things out of the Bible. They're talking about the whole Bible. Okay, very important that if you're going to listen to somebody or do that, I recommend that, you know, the, the Lord has to be with that person, you know, and so I can't tell you where to go. I can't tell you what to do, but at least forgive those people so the Lord can forgive you. So you're not holding that in your heart till you die. Cause some people do that. They take these things, grudges down to the grave with them. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's going to be worse than the grudge movie, okay? You're going to have all them demons crawling on you down there in hell. You don't want to do that. And then you yourself will still have the grudge, and it cannot be resolved because you died in your sin and against whoever you had it against. And I don't, I don't know. You, you don't want to get involved with that. Get your heart right with the Lord right now. We're going to pause if you guys need to. We're going to continue over to the Christians. Uh, you guys, if God is dealing with you about something, you all know what it is. Get it right. Pause. Uh, this thing, pray as long as you need to. Now we're going to move over to the healing phase. There are people who need healing. You need jobs. You need employment. You need finances. You need miracle money. You need something. You need something. Fill in the blank and be very specific with what you need. We're going to pray to the Lord right now. In just a moment, I need to go over a few things. Some of you guys will be getting healed instantaneously. Some of you guys might even get healed before I start praying. Some of you guys need to go to your doctor, your personal doctor, and get diagnosed by him to make sure you don't have anything in you. Have him run tests to make sure if you had, I don't know, AIDS, uh, cancer, whatever it is, to make sure that it's actually gone. There's some people who may be able to feel the difference that it's gone. The Lord might tell you that it's gone. You might hear an audible voice. The Lord heals how he wants to heal differently. Some people are going to have to forgive folks. And then you'll start getting healed. Some people just go to sleep tonight. You wake up the next morning, you'll get healed. Some people have to get rid of stuff in their house. I don't know what it is, but you guys know. Little trinkets, charms, 
uh, idols is what the Bible calls them. Uh, beer, booze, uh, alcohol, beetle nut, pugwa. I don't know. You name it. Anything that would distract you from the Lord and cause you to live a lifestyle and, you know, stuff that's killing you. And, you know, and the, like I said, the Lord is not going to uh, heal your liver so you can, you know, go from a six pack a day to, you know, 24 pack a beer. You know what I mean? The Lord's not going to heal your lungs, right, and your heart so you can go smoke, you know, from two packs of cigarettes to five packs of cigarettes a day. He's not going to allow you to do that. He's not going to let you keep smoking ice and restore your mind and your sanity back. The Lord's not going to do that. So you got to get rid of that nonsense if you have it on you. You got to show the Lord, I'm serious about this, God. I'm getting rid of this stuff. Okay? And the guy, he's going to have to help you. He wants to help you, but just some stuff you guys are going to have to do in order to receive your healing and to be restored. And some people, sadly, what you have done to your life all these years, you know, the Lord is going to reverse it, but it's not always going to be instantaneously you know you spent so many years doing this and we expect god to fix it in one second i mean sometimes he can but you know there's some consequences that for our actions we're gonna have to live with and we're gonna have to live with them for a while it's very sad but it's true that's the part that nobody likes to talk about when we're doing these sinful evil things to ourselves or other people the consequences that you have to live with after the fact okay so now without further ado you guys help me we're going to pray collectively all together, under the sound of my voice, as we do this, pray in your native tongue. Pray in the gift of tongues that the Lord has blessed you with. If he has given you a heavenly language, pray in English, whatever. Let's do it right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to heal these people, that you're going to give them what they need. You hear the need. You know what we need even before we ask. But you want us to ask you in faith so you can perform it. You need us to confess with our mouth what we need. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you don't, you don't just be blessing folks. When, you know, sometimes you might throw us a blessing and we didn't even ask and we didn't even, we're thinking it and then boom, something happens. You, you can work this in so many different ways, God, but a lot of times you're waiting for us to ask you, waiting intently because you are going to take care of it. Only you can take care of it. You died on the cross for this. You shed your precious blood. And may it be done in the name of Jesus. By your precious blood, we thank you, Lord God, that it's done. Amen. You guys, thank you so much for listening. If you got through this whole video, points to you. I'm trying to get straight to the point and make my videos. And, you know, it's always a constant work to get this to d down to a science to be more and more uh, straight to the point of what I'm trying to say. But I appreciate you. I love you. The Lord loves you even more. Like and subscribe for more biblical, truthful content and musical covers. Donations are always welcome. You guys do not have to give, but it would be so welcome. I want to leave a link in the description regarding that. I thank you guys so much. And until the next video, keep the Lord up over your shoulders. Stay safe out there.